So I've managed to get hold of the new Sky router, the black one that uh, Sky are now touting as 30% more Wi-Fi range than the last one and uh, also uh, bigger pipes to take advantage of Sky Fiber. Now I have been using this for the last three or four weeks connected onto my network and I can tell you that uh, the Wi-Fi range is just as bad as the old one. I can't see a 30% increase in range and although it is a little bit faster with its data throughput it's uh, not fast by much and that one of the reasons for that is the chipset that uh, is inside this although it is slightly newer than the chipset in the old one it's still from 2010 and there lies the problem that I have with Sky. The uh, router that they are selling, this is their flagship router, is already three or four years old. Its chipset is now obsolete and basically you're paying £60 for a four year old router. And the other broadband providers in uh, the UK have actually upped their game. The new Superhub 2 from Virgin is an excellent piece of equipment. Uh, do I think it's worth the money that they try to charge? existing customers for it probably not um, you know when you've got a company like uh, Virgin where you've got no choice but to use their equipment you can't go along to PC World and buy a router to connect to, to their network then really they uh, shouldn't be charging you extortionate amounts of money to buy their equipment when you can only use it on their network and it's same with BT the new BT Home Hub 4 I think uh, it costs around £100 from BT it is an excellent router, but uh, again, I mean, uh, it's a lot of money, but I have heard of people getting them down, um, existing customers, negotiating on the telephone and getting it for around £30, which makes it a worthwhile um, upgrade if you're using the uh, really bad, poor Home Hub 4. So, because I've been using this, I, uh, I'm going to crack it open and see if they've actually made any changes uh, to this to uh, when we compare it to the old one i.e. the actual power supply and uh, see what antennas uh, they're actually using in here whether they're just the same so uh, if they are the same then what I'm going to do I'm going to upgrade them just like I did in the last Sky router video so to get into the router itself it's uh, quite straightforward you've got a Phillips screw here on the back you need to remove and there's also a little sneaky one here underneath uh, one of the rubber feet you've actually got to remove that one as well and then it's just plastic clips around the sides holding this uh, top cover in place. So now that we've got it open and we can uh, see the uh, power supply that's in here, it's uh, identical to uh, the last Sky router. Some of these components are laid out a little bit differently on this board, on the power supply board here, but essentially it is identical. So if I put the old one at the side here, you can actually see um, virtually the same components just uh, some of them are laid out a little bit differently and so again the same problem as the last Sky router we're going to have problems with interference over the RF with this power supply because it's not shielded and that is the main issue I've got with this router is this power supply they've gone for design and uh, the aesthetic look of the actual router and yes it does remind me of a classic Apple design and uh, an Apple TV but um, and our, the power supply unit here itself, if it's so close to actually be built into the router itself, it's inside of the router, then it must be shielded. All cheap power supplies give out RF interference, but it's so low that uh, normally it's not an issue because, uh, you know, take BT's own hub, for instance, it's um, powered by a wall wart and it has like uh, probably a meter, meter and a half cable. Uh, before it actually plugs into the back of the router and that's uh, more than enough distance to stop any interference from the power supply interfering with the router so if you are going to put a power supply in the same unit as uh, all the main circuitry for the router like Sky have then it has got to be shielded because it's so close it will interfere with uh, the Wi-Fi antennas inside this uh, router itself so I've set up a little demonstration here to show you how much noise this power supply actually puts out. Now, I've removed it from the main motherboard of the router because I don't want it powering on the actual uh, Wi-Fi circuitry inside the router itself because that will interfere 
with the analyzer so it's uh, not connected to anything and I'm just going to apply power to it and hopefully on the analyzer I can show you exactly what I mean by how much noise this actually puts out so I'm actually going to switch the power supply on now and hopefully you can see on the top graph there there's uh, quite a bit of noise coming up from the actual noise floor on the analyzer uh, none of it's red there's no way this is as powerful as say the Wi-Fi jammer that I built it's not going to completely block out that Wi-Fi signal but that amount of noise is actually going to interfere with the range and the performance of this router itself being so close to those antennas so hopefully that uh, has just shown you exactly what I mean by the amount of noise that this power supply puts out so in order to uh, bring that noise down we are definitely going to have to shield this power supply again so in order to create the shield for the power supply what I'm going to use this time instead of plastic is I've got some thin card it's almost it could be called thick paper it's uh, quite thin and I've just got the power supply here and what I want to do is make a rectangle oblong box to actually cover all this so I'm using the power supply itself as a guide so that will be the base and then I want to leave enough gap for the side and then measure again for the top and then leave enough space again for the other side Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use some spray mount, some spray glue and I'm going to actually stick some aluminium foil directly to this because I don't have enough copper tape to actually create this one. So uh, aluminium foil is going to be uh, just as good. So I've got some glue on there and just normal household kitchen foil. If you get a few creases in it, it uh, really doesn't matter. now that we've got the aluminium foil stuck down what I'm actually going to do is laminate it with some electrician's tape I'm going to have a slight overhang on the sides as well so I can uh, actually insulate the sides of this and then lift it up and we can tuck this under the sides so now we're going to have to do the cutouts so this uh, header pin can still actually connect to the uh, main board so I'm just doing this by eye So what we need to do now is uh, actually cut out some holes in this so we can put those header connectors, those board connectors uh, through so we can actually attach this nice and solidly. But uh, other than that what I'm going to do is when it is in place I'm going to cover the edges where I've cut with some more electrical e electrician's tape and uh, hopefully we'll have ourselves a uh, shield there which will stop all that RF interference. So if we take a look at the rest of the router, the um, antennas are exactly the same as what were in the uh, previous Sky router. There's no difference there whatsoever. So to uh, modify these, it's exactly the same as I did in that last video, is you want to actually desolder the coax away from these uh, two antennas here and uh, attach a RPSMA bulkhead connector to the end of the coax. And then you can uh, attach these to the uh, plastic case drill a hole through pop it in and then uh, use the other nut to hold it in place and then you can 
add any antenna, antenna you like to uh, your router then and it will increase range but um, the upgraded chip is actually under this big heat sink and it is a uh, quite a large heat sink if I show you the board from the last router you've only got a really small heat sink on there so uh, the chip that they've upgraded to is uh, significantly hotter so it uh, needs that bigger more beefier uh, heat sink on there and aside from that chip and that big heat sink everything else looks uh, to be uh, very similar no uh, real big changes in there at all and it's got this big capacitor on here um, so I don't know exactly what that's doing but uh, whether the actual upgraded chip needs it uh, or not I really don't know but everything else is virtually the same so I'm actually getting ready to desolder these antennas away from the um, main board itself because we don't need them anyway so I might as well get rid of them although you could just leave them in situ once you've uh, disconnected that coax it won't hurt but um, one thing I wanted to point out that I've seen uh, is not on the uh, last so I'm actually getting ready to desolder these antennas away from the uh, board itself I mean uh, once you've desoldered the coax you can just leave them in situ if you want to they're not going to interfere with anything but uh, one interesting point uh, of difference between this uh, newer black router and the older white one is this antenna here if you have a look I'll flip it over um, you've got this pattern here and the ground plane on the uh, the ground on the coax is uh, soldered to this uh, bottom plate here and then it folds over the top and your signal wire the center of the coax is soldered on there and you think that's just the antenna but it's not it's actually soldered onto this plane here and this plane is not connected to the ground plane of the main board that shape there is actually part of the antenna designed uh, to actually be that way and uh, again on the second one you've got the same thing you've got this shape here that is actually designed to be soldered onto this antenna so it not only holds it to the board this ground plane is actually designed in there for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna on the uh, second one but if we look at the PCB board on the white sky router again this antenna is actually soldered on here same shape as uh, on the previous board soldered on there but and this is the same I've actually looked at uh, a few different boards the uh, second one isn't soldered on at all to uh, this bottom plane here now whoever designed this would have designed it with that plane in mind so I think this second antenna would not be um, at center frequency to 2.4 gigahertz effectively with the uh, old router you've probably got two antennas here but uh, actually one and a half because this one isn't working correctly could even um, actually uh, degrade performance by uh, it might actually be better to not work at all and actually disconnect that on its own because uh, you know I think that's a fault in the factory and uh, I think they actually knew about it but because they've probably had so many of these go run on a through on a production run they uh, did not call them back so that's uh, very interesting and of course on the newer one it's soldered in place so one thing I've done slightly differently to the last one I've actually put the SMA connectors right near this outside edge here so they actually go down and fit underneath this uh, PCB board here because this PCB board sits uh, virtually in the middle of uh, this plastic case and uh, you were just squashing the actual connectors in themselves they were squashed up a bit here where the uh, actual coax connects to the uh, SMA connector so better if you put them in at the side and then it fits just underneath this PCB board goes together a lot easier so the power supply is in place over the top of this uh, homemade shield and now what we can do is just fold it over tuck it down that edge and then uh, we can just pop the uh, lid back on and it should just hold it all in place and hopefully it will do the job as good as the last one did and hold back some of the RF interference so it actually performs a lot better so hopefully you found that interesting and uh, you will now have a go at uh, modifying your own sky router and uh, to a lot of my viewers that don't live in the UK the techniques that I use to modify these uh, routers can be used 
for lots of uh, different manufacturers routers and um, that basically when you open them up there's not any real difference as far as the antennas go inside routers so uh, a lot of these uh, techniques you can use to uh, modify TP link routers etc and you know alpha routers the uh, list is endless but they're all basically the same inside so if you did find it useful then uh, as always please give it a thumbs up any comments just drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one